We are following some breaking news right now. This is in northern Sonoma County where there is a fire burning. As the Kincaid fire roared to life. Cal Fire says the flames are spreading fast in the gusty conditions. Wine country took another hit. Nature was in charge that night and we had a front row seat to nature's destruction. In two weeks, it became the biggest fire in California all year, burdening a region that was also without power. It's really hard. Sorry, I haven't cried yet. Um, it's been really hard. But through the hardship, we also saw resilience. We wanted to say, hey, you know, we went through something traumatic. It was horrible, but look at the bright side. Look at where we are. Let's get out there and support our neighbors and our, our friends. So today, we're celebrating the community as it comes together to rise from the ashes. Come up and enjoy it. It's still beautiful. This is a Fox 2 Zip Trip special edition to Sonoma County. It is a Friday morning in Sonoma County at the heart of what some call is one of the greatest small towns in America, a community rich with resiliency, with character, with charm. Healdsburg is home to about 12,000 people, and now it's opening its doors so we too can call it home, not only for the next hour, but in the weeks and months ahead. Welcome to the Nine, everybody, live from downtown Healdsburg alongside Gassia Mikaelian. I'm Mike Meback. What a great way to start a Friday morning right here in Healdsburg Plaza. Now, as soon as I parked the car, I saw your vehicle. I didn't say hi. I went right to this great bakery right across the street that this people kept true. telling me to go visit. So I went inside, I got a pastry, I got my cappuccino, and it was all fantastic. And I got Garcia into a conversation with someone who asked me, he said, hey, why are you here? I said, why not? Yeah. This is what we do. Yeah. I love doing this. We need to be here. We need to let the residents of Healdsburg know that, hey, we're here for you in good times and in bad. We need to let the, know, let the people of the Bay Area really know that, hey, the doors open in Sonoma County. Right. The message here is not back in business. The message here is still in business. Come here to Sonoma County, shop, eat, drink, stay if you can, tell your friends and have those friends tell their friends. When we talk about Sonoma County, it's important to know that tourism here is huge. One in 10 jobs here in Sonoma County depends on tourism, and that depends on you and those friends to come here and support your local community. So we have a number of our crews. I'm sure they have their coffee and bagel and muffins. Oh, yeah, and Frank Malico, <laughs> Claudia and Juan. Right. We we have Sal Castaneda, Steve Paulson. We packed up the crew and we're in for an action packed hour. That's right. And so we're going to go ahead and start with our Frank Malico because he's okay. up here at one of the biggest names in Sonoma County, Russian River Brewing. And this brewery, Frank, mm -hmm. is doing something sort of relaunching an oh, incredible product that was started a couple years ago oh, after the Tubbs fire. Absolutely. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Gassia. Uh, we're in the middle of wine country, but what do you know? They make great beer up here as well. It's the Russian River Brewery. And what you were talking about a couple years ago after the Tubbs fire, the Russian River Brewery came out with Sonoma Pride. It was a great beer to help uh, help out the folks that were uh, victims of that Tubbs fire. Well, 60 other breweries jumped on board. They raised over a million dollars in relief efforts and what do you know they're back at it now with a Kincaid fire and helping those folks out Natalie Solorzo yes so I got it right <laughs> Solorzo joins us now uh, you're the owner tell us first and foremost this fire was a little closer to home wasn't it? yes so the Kincaid fire came within just over a mile um, from our brewery and um, yeah so we're very very grateful very fortunate that we had so many so many first responders and firefighters from all over California and beyond to, to be in our community to help and pretty this, much save the town of Windsor. And this is not just a brew pub. How many square feet is this? This is brand new, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We opened just a little over a year ago. This is my and Vinny's dream brewery. It took us four years to, to uh, develop it and build it, and we opened in October yeah. of uh, 2018. All so. right. Well, let's talk about uh, Sonoma Pride. Were you just shocked? how that beer took off two years ago? We were. You know, we had a lot of, um, of friends around the world just reaching out to us. Like, what can we do? How can we help you? And, uh, and so Vinny and I and our attorney just decided within like the first few days of the, of the fires that, that we were going to mobilize our efforts and use a brand that we already have called Sonoma Pride. And so we decided to, um, 
license it to other breweries and allow them to brew the beer and uh, make donations to our fire relief efforts. And we ended up raising $1.1 million. All the money stayed in our community to local charities. And um, we ended up uh, buying um, some manufactured homes for people who lost their homes in Journey's End Mobile Home Park. And um, really, it was just a, a, an amazing, heartwarming um, effort. I, I do a lot of fundraising, and I've participated in a lot of charitable events, and that was by far the most um, rewarding experience I've ever had. All right. Well, Natalie, thank you very much. The beer is fermenting right now. It's yes. not going to be on tap until uh, December the 7th, but some of the proceeds and uh, going to help out the folks with the Kincaid Fire as well. Coming up in a little bit, we're going to talk to some of the owners of the vineyards uh, here in Healdsburg and Windsor. We're also going to taste some of this beer. You got to drink beer if you're in a brew pub, right? So we'll send it back to you guys. There you go. Hey, the Blind Pig IPA, pretty good IPA as well. Frank, thank you for that. From Frank, let's check in with KTVU's Claudine Wong. She joins us live right now from Sonoma Plaza. Claudine, good morning. Good morning. Yes, we're still in coffee mode here, coffee and pastries mode. And, uh, you know, when you're talking about community, you're talking about resiliency, you're talking about coming together. Really, you can't look any further than this bakery here in Sonoma Square. It's called the Basque Boulangerie Bakery. It's been here for 25 years. It's been hopping this morning with all the locals who know things are normal and great and ready to be uh, full of business. I want to take you inside because really just an incredible place in here. You can see uh, it's been a steady crowd of people. Walk on in here. 25 years this has been here. This is a second generation bakery that has actually been in the community for much, much longer. Everyone wa waving at us. You're giving us a little wave. Hi. Hi. Hey, so are you a regular here? Well, we're actually from Mountain View, but we're on our way to visit family up in Lincoln, and so this is one of our favorite spots. Favorite spots. It's easy to see why. It smells so good in here, and I'm glad you keep stopping by and keep giving them business. Yes, it's a fun place. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for talking to us. We're going to go over here now to talk to the owner, Sonny, because uh, as busy as it seems now, this business, like many others, are struggling with a loss because of the power outages, because of the perceptions. And so, Sonny, you have a great story here in terms of your locals, the people who always stop by. This is an institution here in Sonoma. Yeah, we've been here for uh, 20, we'll have a 26th anniversary next year, and we just try to get through everything, you know, ups or downs. Uh, we've been here, and uh, the great part is that it's a local place. So if you look around, like clockwork, folks come in at 6, 7, 8, 9, and at the other end, we also help out the tourists coming in. Yeah, literally everyone I've seen come in here, you guys have said, oh, hi, Joe, hi, Keith, hi, Sarah. You know who all these folks are. And everybody's got their own table, their own timetable, their own, uh, you know, exact coffee they want. So it's just a, a normal thing. And you guys stayed open. I know our crews were here. You stayed open during the power outage. You, you made sure you timed it so people could get their coffee. And yeah. But really, you're still seeing a loss in business. Oh, absolutely. Um, we did stay open during the, the, the past two weeks and then those big three days because they got to get their, I mean, yeah, they gotta they, get their coffee. It's, it's critically important that the sense of community and the sense of normalcy is there even through thick and thin. So that's very important to us. Well, Sonny, thank you so much. I hope all business comes roaring back in. It's a busy morning this morning so and the tradition continues here in Sonoma with really uh, this family atmosphere and the sense of community that just doesn't go away no matter what. All right, we'll send it back to you guys. All right, Claudine, thank you very much. Hey, I don't live in Sonoma County, but I feel like I've raised my two children in Sonoma Plaza. Now, that, some may yeah. say that's bad parenting. Yeah. No, we like to say parenting. we're fun parents and we yes. like to get out of the house, but uh, it's a great spot. No, it is. Picnics and blankets and music and farmer's market. I love it all. Um, back here uh, in Sonoma County, it's important to note that a lot of people come up here, again, to eat and to drink. And there are a lot of fine dining restaurants you have to wait months and months before you can get a reservation for. That may not be the case now, and that could be good news. Let's go now to Sal Castaneda. You're live at Valette, and typically, Sal, Valette has a long list of people waiting for reservations. Now may be the time to call in, right? That's absolutely right. Uh, Dustin Vallette, the, the chef here, uh, is uh, up. I wouldn't even say up and coming. He's already famous. He's my bro, so I can say that. So uh, he uh, has this restaurant that is normally hard to get into, uh, but now you think you can get into. This is a beautiful spot. And uh, coming up a little later, I'm going to tell you about something new that he's doing right here in Healdsburg Square. But I do want to let you know that if you want to come up and eat here in Healdsburg, they are open for business. One of the businesses that closed was Valette, a restaurant serving contemporary American cuisine near the square in downtown Healdsburg. 
This restaurant was empty for eight days because of the fire evacuation and power shutoff. Norma Alvarez has worked in the kitchen here since the restaurant opened four years ago. She says the closure was hard for her. It was very bad because I'm a single mother with four children and I don't have family here. I spent a cold week without enough food for me and my sons. Alvarez said she had to stay with friends more than 100 miles away, lost more than a week's pay and was worried the whole time about her house burning down. Now that she's back at work, she says it's taking time for her to feel normal again. Toma tiempo. It takes time because I was in shock for a bit, thinking this could happen again. I was very happy to return and find everything normal. For us, I think there's perception that everything got burned down, where in actuality it wasn't. But the perception is what's kind of causing a, uh, you know, it's causing that wave, it's causing that second tier where people are canceling their reservations coming out here. They're not wanting to go to hotels or, you know, come to the wineries, come to restaurants. Chef and co-owner Dustin Vallette says he and other business owners are telling everyone who will listen through social media and by word of mouth that Healdsburg is open for business and now may be your time to secure that normally tough to get reservation. Okay. If you come to Valette, you may want to try the restaurant's signature scallop dish. This is our scallops on crew. This is one of the dishes, I always joke and say, this dish literally created this restaurant. We have a little bit of leeks and a little bit of fennel, a steam scallop. Now, we're gonna break this, look at this. Oh my gosh. Wow. So that's beautiful perno inside there. We're gonna break it, we're gonna pour in a caviar, chardonnay, and champagne for Blanc. And we use beautiful little Sardin Nicolai caviar inside there. And the idea is the scallop steam inside that leek and perneau and beautiful fennel flavors. And then that caviar just adds that delicious textural pop back to the dish. Nate Davis is back at work as chef de cuisine at Villette. He says he sees the silver lining despite the hardship faced by the community. Granted, I wish that we could never experience this again, but it's also kind of heartwarming to just see the community come together and persevere. So workers are busy cooking again, and that, they say, is good news for everyone. I think word is getting around the fact that, you know, we are, in fact, open for business. and. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Norma Alvarez says she is grateful to the people coming back and to the owners here for treating her like family. It's like my family, and the owners have always supported me in everything. Mike and Gassi, I want to let you know that uh, Dustin Vallette is opening a restaurant in about a year, right across from where you are. It's at Healdsburg Plaza. It's going to be called the Matheson. So even more uh, lovely restaurants opening here. A lot of great businesses. If you want to eat in Sonoma County here in Healdsburg, uh, you have plenty of options. Back to you guys. I love it. Sal, thank you so much. You know, from fine dining to everyday food, we really have to focus on the daily lives of those people who were affected, not just by the power outages, but also by the largest evacuation effort ever here in Sonoma sure. County. Talking about the food that you put on the dinner table every night for your family, and we need your help in providing that. If we can put up some information, I want to get the word out about all the good work that's being done and will keep on being done by the Redwood Empire Food Bank. During the Kincaid fire, they fed well over 25,000 people in a week. Normally they feed about 14,000 people a week. As we look ahead to the holidays, and here Thanksgiving is less than a week away, they have almost 100,000 people to serve, and they need our help in doing that. Here's how you can help. You can donate at the food bank. It's there on Brickway Boulevard in Santa Rosa. You can also donate anywhere. You see a Get Food Barrel in Sonoma County. There's one here behind us on Hillsburg Plaza, but I cannot stress enough if you have $10 worth of food to give, if you have $100 or $1,000 worth of food to give, you are going to make the difference for a family that had to pack up and leave. And let's keep in mind, a lot of these businesses closed because they couldn't process paycheck. They couldn't welcome guests. Sonoma County is still in business and open for business. But when you talk on the very individual level, Mike, think about how it feels to have to wonder how much food can I put on the table tonight? So again, you can make a difference in this throughout Sonoma County. Mm -hmm. If you can, please give. Hey, excellent start. And we're going to talk more about that specifically with the mayor of Windsor, also the vice mayor of Healdsburg. Right. But when we return, we're talking about Soto Rock Winery. That is a winery that was hit hard by the Kincaid Fire. The owners of that winery are going to be sitting down with us right here in downtown Healdsburg. You're watching The Nine, live from Sonoma County.
Welcome back to the nine on a gorgeous little bit chilly Friday. We're taking a special zip trip to shine a bright spotlight on Sonoma County, which is still open for business. Let's talk with two leaders of Sonoma County. We'd like to welcome the uh, mayor of Windsor here, Dominic Fopoli, to the nine and also Leah Gold. You're the vice mayor here in your beautiful city of Healdsburg. Thanks for joining us. Certainly. Tell me about your message, not just to the Bay Area or California, really to the world. Well, we faced a dire threat with the Kincaid fire, but Everything went beautifully as far as the community coming together, the uh, city staff, the um, representatives all the way up the line getting us the resources we needed, the local restaurateurs who, who first fed um, evacuees from farther north and then later fed the first responders, the hoteliers that put the first responders up, the uh, city residents who all helped each other, who evacuated promptly and smoothly and get out of the way so the responders could do their jobs. So in a way this whole event has been reassuring for us because we faced the threat and everyone did what they needed to do and it brought us together as a community. And Dominic, you said that at one point, I mean, you thought your entire town was going to go. And yeah. You have a lot of credit to firefighters for saving it. Absolutely. That was uh, obviously one of the most traumatic things the mayor could ever go through to, to hear that we were about to lose our town. But thanks to the amazingly brave work of a couple hundred first responders from all over the, the, the country, honestly, that came in, they were able to save every single town. So it's a, just great news all around. As it leaders of your cities, I was curious because, you know, harvest time is such a big time for, for everyone in, in Sonoma County and in, in all counties that grow wine. But is there a push now to get people to come visit not only in the wintertime, but maybe more in the springtime moving forward? Well, it's always a great time to visit Healdsburg. We have a wonderful climate year round. Um, but I think now it's especially good time because we call it Hugsburg. You know, everyone is so, so excited about being together and enjoying our, our town, it's, it's just a really great time to visit. I read in one of the national newspapers, they refer to Sonoma County as Napa County's relaxed and welcoming sister. Um, and better, and better. And better. <laughs> a little chill. Right, right, a little chill, you know, but, but when you look on the worldwide stage, which really is, is what you're looking at when you're trying to attract more people here to your county, um, what do you say to people who, who don't know anything about Sonoma other than the headlines they may have read in the past month, Dominic? I think that was a good, pretty good way to, to describe it. There's a lot more family-run businesses here, I think, and that's it's kind of an old school, what, what, what Napa used to be. Uh, that's the great thing about, that I think all of us love about our community so much, is there's such a sense of family. Um, all, so many of our restaurants, so many of our wineries, uh, we're all very, we're actually close friends. And that was uh, the, the, actually the hardest part about right now is to try to get that word out that, that we are open for business uh, because it's in 2017, the, the second tragedy of the Tubbs fire was the fact of that the, the nation stopped coming here for a while. Uh, and the reality is, look, look behind us, it's gorgeous. It's perfect. Uh, and it's, it's a thing that the, I think the best way that people in the Bay Area can help us with our recovery is to come up here and enjoy our area. In Healdsburg and in Windsor, come drink our wine and stay in our hotels and eat in our, great, our, our rest, amazing restaurants. Yeah. I mean, I'm guilty of it growing up. I remember going to Windsor as a child and going to Windsor Waterworks. You know, but <laughs> I was at Lifeguard there for three summers. <laughs> right. It was a good spot. Uh, but ever since then, it, it can be one of those towns as Hillsburg that you kind of drive right by on 101. So I encourage everyone at home to don't do that to stop, yeah. to enjoy the day. Because you can spend an entire day in Windsor, you can spend an entire day in Healdsburg and have a wonderful it, time. It, and that's something that I really wanted to bring up too. So there's, it's an amazing area just between our two towns. So Windsor, we have this amazing area that's where, where my family winery is. And our whole area uh, was hit, surrounded by the fire. Uh, our, my family winery is reopening today, finally. Um, and the problem is that there was so much news coverage in our, our area, Healdsburg, the, the surrounding county area in Windsor, showing fire, 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 fire. The reality is no structures burned uh, in Windsor, uh, no wineries burned uh, in our in our area. Of course, the Wilsons had had, had their, their problems. Um, but the reality is you're open. We're open. That's Everyone's it. open. There's not a single winery that's not open in, our, in either of our towns. There's not a single restaurant that's not open. Come enjoy our I area. We it. will. Thank you both for joining. <laughs> Dominic, Leah, thank you. Congratulations. Of course. Thank, thank you. you. All right, coming up uh, next right here on The Nine, digging in uh, for a fight. KTVU's Claudine Wong is going to take us to the front lines uh, where so many firefighters and volunteer firefighters, really the first on scene, battled those massive flames to save homes, to save barns, and many other structures. Again, you're watching The Nine live this morning from downtown Healdsburg.
welcome back to the nine. We're having a special zip trip to highlight all the good ha ha things happening here in Sonoma County after a massive fire evacuation effort and a string of power outages. Sonoma County is more than open for business and welcoming your smiling face and your dollars. We're also highlighting the good work of people, the men and women here who really stood up and raised a hand and saved their own communities. We're talking about volunteer firefighters. Claudine Wong is in Sonoma Square to talk about some heroic efforts on their parts. Claudine. That's right. If you're looking for stories of heroes, it's not about finding a story. It's about picking one. So many people stepped up to help. And in the town of Geyserville, you don't have to look any further than the fire department. For the town of Geyserville, the Kincaid fire was devastating. And as the fire progressed, the winds pushed it into the town of Geyserville. So this became the bullseye for the Kincaid fire. The firefighters met it as it roared over the ridges, consuming whatever was in its path. And as the Geyserville firefighters fought, the flames took the homes of their friends and their neighbors. And as volunteer firefighter John Lilienthal stood on that fire line, the fire turned his family home to ash. You know, honestly, it was, it was such a, I was so numb to everything that, that I think staying on the job was like the best thing for me to do at the time. And, and from my experience in the Army as a combat medic, uh, the mission always comes first, regardless of what, what happens. So, um, you know, we had to continue doing what we were doing, um, and, and there was no way we could stop. For them, the firefight was personal. The department is made up largely of volunteers, and all have their own reasons for showing up. Veteran John Lilienthal is in the fire academy and working towards a full-time position. I decided to use my GI Bill uh, to go back to school to get uh, my EMT license, and then that just eventually led me down this path to knock on the door here at Geyserville. Battalion Chief Mark Gradick retired last November after working for more than three decades as a firefighter. Two months later, he joined this department as a volunteer. I uh, still want to give back to the community and, um, you know, wasn't quite ready to hang it up. Chris Munzel signed up 21 years ago, inspired after seeing other volunteers in action. He has spent decades balancing this job with his other career. I'm a winemaker for uh, Ernest and Jewel Gallo here in, in Sonoma County and look after the wineries uh, here in the North Coast. All of them have gone through hundreds of hours of training just for the privilege of working for free. And they still train every month. And when the Kincaid fire hit, they all answered the call. We do about 3,000 miles a month. We were at 7,000 miles. So that's these guys, these volunteers, no pay, away from their family, uh, no electricity on at home. Some guys are without gas, warm showers. In recent years, the department has added a couple of full-time paid positions. But paid or not, they all have a history of volunteering. Even the chief, Marshal Turbyville, who is part-time here and full-time with Cal Fire. Roughly uh, 18 years of volunteer time. I still think that I give most of my time at a discounted rate or volunteer, because <laughs> I don't count the hours. I just do it because it's a passion, and I like the community. It's in his blood. His dad was a volunteer with Geyserville. When he died, he was still the fire chief um, at that time in 2003. They are all bound by a desire to serve. Can't teach that, huh? Can't teach that, no. And as they train for the next one, because there will be a next one, they do it together. The people that care about the community are willing to show up on holidays, time away from their family, risk their own lives to save their community. Um, that's the American spirit, the way I see it. That's the sense of community. That's what I want to continue to foster. It's hard, but that's what I think is really what's great about America and about California. Such a great group of people. The fire chief says they're always looking for more volunteers, not just firefighters, but support services. Anyone who wants to help, they would welcome the assistance. We'll send it back to you. All right, Claudine, thank you for that. Hats off to all those firefighters out there, not just the volunteers, but everyone who put on a uniform and saved homes and other structures during that Kincaid fire. Absolutely. So, yeah. of course, here we are in Sonoma County. We have to talk wineries, right? Sure, why not? Now that I have to twist your arm, coming up, there are about 425 wineries in Sonoma County. Two of them have damage, but 423 plus are open for business. We're going to talk more about the Sonoma County wine scene in a minute. Stay with us.
And welcome back to the nine on a special zip trip to Sonoma County. We have packed up and headed north uh, where a lot of places are open. Restaurants, cafes, wineries, breweries, including the one right there, the Russian River Brewing Company, home to Pliny the Elder, Pliny the Younger. And also, if you haven't heard it, the Blind Pig IPA. Some great uh, beers in Sonoma County. We're going to check back in with uh, Frank Malico in just a bit when he's going to tell us about those beers, but also about a lot of the wineries here in Sonoma County. Welcome back, everyone. Joining us right now, Meteorologist Steve Paulson. Hello, hello. Steve, welcome. Uh, thank you, Rosemary. Downtown. The first thing she said to me was, a little that? different. You look different. A little different than in the summer. Yeah, my hands are freezing. Uh, <laughs> uh, it was 38 here this morning, yeah. and it felt like it. And uh, it's clear skies. It's and clear. we were saying, look, this area usually gets a lot of rain by December 1st. Uh, by, the, by this time, they should have five and a half to six inches of rain. They've got a quarter of an inch. Uh, L.A., uh, San Diego has more than we do. Wow. I think Phoenix has more than we do. Come on now. Right. Doesn't mean it's not going to happen. Doesn't mean it, what right. happens Last in, year, in November instance. doesn't foretell well. what's going to happen for the winter. Our turn's coming next week. I think we'll get some in here. But as you know, when it rains up here, right. it can rain unbelievably hard. And so they're used to that. And so when it changes, it changes fast. And I think it will next week. It definitely does. What's your, you come up here all the time. What's your favorite thing to do up in oh Sonoma County? Oh, my gosh. There's, the, the list is endless. Yeah. Uh, visit my buddy Kevin. Where is he? Where is my there buddy Kevin? Go. So he says, let's go here. Let's go. He knows the town like yeah. the back of his hand. Now. And it so, is such a family town. I mean, you know, completely. I, I kind of said with you know what the newspaper said about you know being the relaxed hip sister of Napa County, Sonoma County, a little bit of a hidden gem for people who don't know it. Absolutely. But, and they're talking Santa Rosa, Windsor, all the way up to Hillsburg. You keep going, guys, you've got lots to do. Real quick, it. because they get so much rain here. That plays a role in the type of wines that they grow here? Absolutely. Valley, oh, the, well, the microclimates by far. Right. You go west, you do the Pinots, you do the whites, you go in a little bit, and you get the you, know, you get the, the cabs, the Merlots, the hotter sun. Got it. Yep. Good to have you, Steve. Anytime. Glad All right, I know South Casaneda is standing by at a unique gift shop called Mr. Moon's. They suffered no damage from the fires, but Sal, you're telling us that they did still suffer in some sense, and they're saying they are more than open for business this morning. They are definitely open for business here at Mr. Moon's, and I managed to find the owner of Mr. Moon's, which is Jessica Timpson. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, for coming. This store is great. You're already decked out for Christmas. Uh, how long have you been in business? Uh, we've been in business here in Hillsburg almost 30 years, um, in business in total 40, so a long time. All right, so people are, want to know that they're coming back. This store is great. It has jewelry. Can you tell us a little more about uh, your store and what you have to offer? Absolutely. Uh, we do a little bit of everything. We like to call ourselves an eclectic gift retail. We have something for everyone in the family, and we really try to just curate and pick things that we think all kinds of people will enjoy. T-shirts, cards, uh, caps, gifts for children, gifts for adults. So the way you compete with, let's say, a big box retail or the Internet shopping is that people can come here and get personal service and see high-end items. Exactly. Yeah, we really try to, like, provide an experience. It's charming. Uh, we want you to feel, touch, experience things. We have wonderful employees that will help you find a gift, whatever it is you're looking for. And we really just try to provide a charming and unique experience. And every dollar spent in a local store goes back into the direct community so it's really just a good way to shop so this is right on the square so people come in and they they might not even know you're here but uh, they just walk in what do your customers uh, who come back tell you they like about the store uh, they love our mix. They love our curated mix. They love the experience. We, we try to stay joyful and upbeat. We want people to come in, laugh, connect with each other, connect with the community, and really just have a great time. Jessica, thank you. I already found something that, uh, check this out. Okay, if you're a Bob Ross fan, they have all kinds of things. They have this. Mike and Gacia, I can see this is your Christmas card coming up for this next year. Bob Ross. And some happy little trees. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> thank Sal, thank you very much for that. All right, let's check in with uh, KTVU's Frank Malico, who joins us now from the Russia River and Brewing Company. Not necessarily talking about beer this time around, though, Frank. We're, we're diving into some wine here. <laughs> Exactly. Of course, we are in the heart of wine country here in Windsor and Healdsburg at the Russian River Brew. But uh, as you mentioned, hundreds of vineyards in Sonoma County, all affected by the Kincaid Fire. And the line of delineation seems to be Highway 101. On the west side, you got the Dry Creek Valley, which had to deal with power. On the east side, you've got the Alexander Valley, and that was a completely different story. Fred Young will never forget that fateful night. And then you could just see the, the glow, top of the hill, and then pretty soon you start seeing the flames. He is a fifth generation owner of the Alexander Valley's Robert Young Estates Winery, 448 acres strong, and his vineyard was right in the crosshairs of the Kincaid Fire. The wind was just 60, 70 miles an hour, and 
it came from the top of that hill down to right to the bottom of the vineyard here, which is a good mile, mile and a half. And uh, it was on top of us. Young and his son, alongside dozens of firefighters, fought the flames for 24 straight hours and miraculously saved the vineyard, the winemaking facility, their homes, and their new multi-million dollar tasting room, which is now surrounded by charred ground. Exhausted, those firefighters took a well-deserved nap on the family lawn, photos that went viral on social media. Oh, makes me feel uh, very uh, grateful, you know, for, for for the firefighters and the first responders for helping out. I mean, if it wasn't for them, uh, it, it would look a lot different than it does. 8% of their grapes still hang on the vine, all lost to smoke damage. But nearly their entire operation is still intact. And they are grateful for folks like Sean and Paige Steed of Florida, who rung in their 10th anniversary despite the recent fires. It's amazing. We've been here before, but there, there's no signs like we haven't seen anything that's really stood out to us and everyone's been super welcoming and it's been great. I guess you won't forget this finish 2019. Will no, you? I won't. No, <laughs> not at all. The Kincaid fire never jumped Highway 101 here into the Dry Creek Valley in Hillsburg, but that doesn't mean the wineries here on the west side weren't affected. That includes over 70 wineries like Lambert Bridge, while fire wasn't their primary issue, evacuations and power outages were. After the Tubbs fire, Lambert Bridge bought a generator and was able to ride out the nearly two-week blackout. This community is so strong. General Manager Bill Smart is quick to thank first responders, but he also believes not only the wineries, but Sonoma County authorities were much better prepared this time around. I'm going to tell you right now, they saved this place by getting everybody out of the way, acting the way they did, and letting firefighters do their thing, which is to fight fire. And that's what saved Windsor, that's what saved Healdsburg, that's what saved Geyserville. While the wine is flowing at Lambert Bridge, so is the gratitude, because this tight-knit valley just got a little bit tighter. It makes me emotional thinking about it, honestly. I mean, the, the sense of community, the way people come together up here is is unlike any other place that I could think of. Um, people take care of each other up here. Apparently they do. Bill tells me he got phone calls, he got emails, he got uh, everyone calling him saying, hey, do you need a place to stay? How is the uh, winery doing? That kind of thing. And then back to Robert Young, when he was fighting the fire alongside his son, there were crews from as far away as Amador County, from Shasta, from Ukiah. So a lot of folks pitching in here in Sonoma County, which, by the way, seems to be a theme up here. That's the latest here in Windsor, guys. We'll send it back to Hillsburg. Excellent. All right, Frank, thank you for that. We mentioned that there are 425 plus wineries here in Sonoma County and the two have damage. One unfortunately had some extensive damage and we are of course talking about the Soda Rock Winery. All that is left of Soda Rock this morning is uh, the barn, the Lord Snort sculpture and a lot of goodwill and open hearts and people ready to pour for you in that barn. So we are so happy to welcome to the night Ken and Diane Wilson of Soda Rock Winery. Thanks both for being here. Hey, thanks for having You're us. You're open for business and pouring and before we talk about what's coming, if I can take you back to that day, you just described tremendous heartache when you realize what was happening Ken with the Kincaid fire oh absolutely I mean you're just you just don't believe that it's happening to you right yeah it's just that's uh, it's total shock and you just go into a into a uh, funk that you can't get out of it's um, impossible to bring it to reality and and uh, it took took a good week for me to realize that I was had to move on because that's my only choice. Yeah. Right. What about that debate, Diane? Was there a debate on whether or not, I mean, the, the historic barn was saved on the property, firefighters did that, you were able to pour wine out of there, but uh, between the two of you, did you have a debate on whether or not you were gonna continue here? I don't think there was ever a debate. I think it was just always move forward and... Instinctive, and, mm -hmm. it became mm -hmm. instinctive. Yeah. Eh? It just like, all of a sudden the barn was there, well, well, we're moving on, right. just like everybody else is moving on. So we had to do that. I so. like to say when people when people lose structures, whether it's a home or in your case a winery, you know you can take away the building, but the soul of the property, especially your property, because it goes back so many decades, yeah. that soul of that property still exists. When you walk around, you still feel it there. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I've, we spent ten years on that property, putting it our heart and soul into it with every stick and whatever and then to have it gone it takes a lot out of you but 
the, the soul is still there, the passion that we put into it. It's, you know, we're, we're, the barn, fortunately, the firefighters were able to save the barn, 150-year-old structure, and we can, that's now the new focus for us right and, now. And so the people who you're pouring for these days, what do they say? Well, they, they're just, everybody's obviously sad, but thrilled that we're moving on and they're joining us and they're joining in the resiliency of Sonoma County to, to, um, to just give us all the strength to endure what we've all gone through and bring us back together. So it, it's a wonderful feeling actually when and, you're out there. And Diana, as, as we look ahead to these coming months, which can be quiet, what's your message, not just for the Bay Area, but, but for, for everyone who can hear this? Um, you know, really you can drive and come up to Sonoma County and you would see almost no evidence of fire. Yeah. You know, things are open for business like you keep keep reminding everybody and it's a uh, and this time of year is actually a little less crowded than yeah. it is. It's a great time to come up. Fall, so it it's a great time to come, like you were saying, less times on reservations. Right. And so we're open for business and, and carrying on. Yeah. Are you pouring the Alexander Valley Cab? We pour Alexander Valley I Cab, know you the general. <laughs> yeah, the Soda Rock. Uh, um, we have the Diane Marie and the uh, yeah. and the uh, yeah. You guys have great wines. Carl. I Pardon? may have to swing by on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> You'll Just see a him quick swing in by. an hour. You'll see Mike, and then again on Sunday with his family, yeah, we'll, Ken and Diane Wilson of Soda Rock. Well, I have wine in the car. I can get. Okay, there you even go. better. I'll still swing by though, Diane. <laughs> yes, you will. I made that promise. Thank you again. Thank, thank you both. Thank Good you. luck to both thank of you. Very good. Good. All right, yeah. still to come right here on the nine, we're going to check back in with KTVU's uh, Claudine Wong. Uh, she is live in Sonoma Square. If you've ever been to train town you know where that yeah. square is just about a mile north of yes. uh, good old train town sunflower cafe that's actually a great spot in the square anyways much more to come on the nine we're live from downtown healdsburg All right, welcome back to the nine. So many times my wife and I would say, hey, let's go do some wine tasting up in Sonoma County. And then we would tell the children, hey, let's go to Train Town. Right, so they were excited. Happy. A little bit of a trick if you've never used it. Train yes. Town and then hit a wine yes. get some lunch and you head on back home. Yes. So it's a good way to go. Anyways, let's uh, check in with Claudine Wong. She's right near Train Town in Sonoma Square. Hey, Claudine. Good morning. Welcome back to Sonoma. And yes, you know what? The coolest thing about Sonoma Square is that the center and the things that you see right around it are very cool, but if you do a little exploring, you will find all these hidden gems kind of tucked into little passages ways, and that's what brought us to Abbott's Passage Supply Company, and I've got the proprietor here with me, Katie Bunshu, and this is such a cool spot. You've been open for about two years, so this has been kind of an interesting opening. Definitely, certainly. We signed the lease for this building three months before the fires in 2017. Had to wait a little bit before we actually had our official grand opening in December of 2017. So we've been open for two years now. So tell me about what we see here. We take a look around because it's a really cool space and, mm -hmm. and what you do, you do a little bit of everything. Definitely. So when I opened it two years ago, my vision was to not only be able to showcase the wine, but to also have the brand come to life through workshops and specifically merchandise. So hence Abbott's Passage Supply Company. So we have the upstairs that we're looking at right now. You have little workshops, you have all sorts of things, wine tastings up there as well. Yeah, definitely. We do private tastings up there. We've done workshops with kombucha making, candle making, um, we'll, hopefully we'll do a pasta making class upcoming. And we got to go, but I want to take us outside really quickly yep. before we go. And let's talk about the history, because people are just going to say, wait, Bunshu and Gunlock Bunshu, they're going to recognize the name. This is a new company. You have your own wine, but this is a company and a store that's steeped in history here. Definitely, yes. So being, it, my family's been in the Valley for 161 years. I wanted to find a location that mirrored that history. So the Redwood Barn, while it's a little off the plaza, about a half, or half block off the plaza, it does have history dating back to 1886, which was really important to me to be able to, to find something that had a historical significance when I opened this spot. Well, Katie, it's beautiful. It feels like you find a little hidden gem that it's your own secret place when you come back here. <laughs> and so make sure you come to visit. Really, you'll be missing out if you don't. We'll send it back to you.
Thank you, Claudine. I know Sonoma has a great farmer's market. I've been there also since we're in Healdsburg. I have to say, Healdsburg's farmer's market is tomorrow just a couple blocks from okay. here. A cool. lot of good things to do, and we have to go right back to our Frank Malicote. He is at Russian River Brewing talking about uh, a resilient brewery, and, and again, they're, they're more than open for business, Frank. Oh boy, are they ever. And I'm feeling right at home. Years ago, I was a bartender. I'm now behind the bar here at the Russian River Brewery with Natalie Salerzo. And uh, you guys were kind of the little engine that could uh, 20 years ago, 21 years ago. And now, how big is this facility? Um, so this is our new brewery in Windsor. We just finished it just a little over a year ago, and it is 85,000 square feet under roof. So the whole property is about 15 acres, including four acres of protected wetlands, which uh, we can look at to the west. Do you have to pinch yourself a little bit? Yes, I do. I I, every day, I still pinch myself when I drive up. <laughs> and, and you see this massive place where you make yeah. this delightful beer. What do we have in front of us? Take us through. So yeah, so I poured some samples this morning. We have a, a, a beer called Velvet Glow. It's a Hellas-style lager. I have our Mind Circus, which is a hazy IPA, Pliny the Elder, which is a double IPA, and it's our flagship beer, as well as Consecration, which is a sour barrel-aged beer, um, which is uh, one of the other styles that we're known for. It's interesting. Beer has become more like wine with all these different varietals. Right? Yeah, yeah. It's much more interesting to drink beer nowadays um, than it was, say, even 20 years ago. And Pliny the Elder, but there is Pliny the Younger, and that has just taken off. Give us yeah. a little background on that. So Pliny the Younger was originally brewed in, by us in 2005, just as a winter seasonal release to bring people in during the slower winter months and so it was literally just a beer that we would brew every December and release it in early February just for several years and then in 2010 um, with kind of social media and beer blogging websites and things um, the beer just just suddenly became like the best beer in the world according <laughs> according so. to like 10 people and then suddenly we had these giant lines out the door and and had to kind of rethink yeah. how we do business completely and by the way I think you're okay with that I will try try the elder and cheers would you like to grab one as well yes please and here's that. the russian river brewery cheers thank you for all the best you. guys we'll send it back to you not a bad way to start the day cheers no there you go all right frank thank you all right still to come we we're talking about wines and we're talking about beers but what about some ice cream yes even maybe a slice of pie on a friday morning <laughs> we're going to check in with uh, steven sow who are live inside noble folk ice cream right here in downtown healdsburg Welcome back, because we're shining a big bright light on Sonoma County, which is more than open for your business. We are so happy to be joined by the head of the Sonoma County Tourism Board, Claudia Vecchio, and also Charlie Palmer himself Thank of the Hotel much. and Restaurant Empire. Welcome. Of course, of course, we'll talk to you in a second. First, Claudia, I have to talk to you about how you are now taking on the notion that Sonoma County is open for business and stronger than ever. Yep. What's your message to people across California and far beyond? Well, just that. I mean, this is a glorious time to be in Sonoma County, and thank you for bringing your crew up here and showcasing some of the things that we have to offer. But it's uh, during the fall and the autumn, it, as you can see, it is a gorgeous time to be in Sonoma County. So we really think this is a perfect time to gather your friends and family and be up here. But, you know, really the notion of of the challenges that we faced in October, and you've talked to a lot of people about that. Um, you know, we're certainly working through what that means in the future and the realities and, you know, the opportunities that we have for our visitors who love to come up here during this time of year. So, you know, we're, we're taking a look at, at how we message that and taking a look at some shifts in how we market Sonoma County. And so there's a lot to consider right now, and we're really taking on that challenge. Charlie, right? let me ask you, because September, October, such big months here in Sonoma, in Napa County, really in the region. Uh, we've had three consecutive years of fires during these months in this area. Is there any concern moving forward that this is the norm and how does it impact someone like yourself who is in the restaurant, in the hotel industry? Well, you know, I think for us it's, it's, it's about, first of all, we're the most resilient people in the world here. You know? Yes, you, know, you are. We bounce back quick. And, uh, and as Claudia said, you know, like, all you have to do is step up here and see how great and how beautiful it is. Uh, the food is delicious. The wines are amazing. And it's almost like nothing has happened. Now, we, we can dwell on the past and we can look at what's happened in the past. But I think I'm all about the future and what happens in Sonoma County. And, uh, you know, it, it's really it's one of the most amazing places in the world sure. to be. 
Yeah. I don't know if 10 a.m. is too early for a, a big fat steak and a nice glass of red wine, but, <laughs> no. but if it's not, oh, never too early. Uh, we'll stop by after the night. Thank you, Charlie Palmer, for joining Thank us, you. and also Claudia Vecchio of the Sonoma County Tourism Board. Thank you. Sip Sonoma, gather in Sonoma, all those great hashtags out there. Exactly. Thank, Thank you, you both. All right, great. how about some ice cream and a pie? Why not? After the <laughs> steak and the wine, I'm ready. Sal, Steve, we'll send it over to you. Where are you guys at? We're at Noble Folk Ice Cream and Pie Bar, and I'm going to tell you that this place is wonderful. We have a lot to eat here, and I want to show you some of the samples. And uh, while we're doing that, I want to talk to one of the owners, Ozzy Jimenez, who is here with us now. Ozzy, uh, Sonoma County and Healdsburg in particular, everything is still here. It's a great time to come up, isn't it? Absolutely. Fall is one of the most beautiful times here in North County. Um, the holidays are right around the corner, and it's just a really fun, family-focused place. The historic plaza, you know, is one of the most beautiful places, I think, that I've seen in California. Um, so please, come to Healdsburg. We're open. We're open for business. Uh, we're an ice cream and pie shop. Uh, we've been here for about, I would say, five years now. We started when we were really young, um, and over here we have Christian. And I will talk to Christian, one of the co-owners. And you are born and raised here, right? Born and raised, yep, 1988. All right, let's take a look at what is this that we're looking at right here? So this is the salted caramel Mississippi mud pie. It's one of our kind of signature flavors. And this ice cream? And this is a, a, a espresso ground uh, ice cream that we make. Uh, for the local folks, is there a favorite in Healdsburg for ice cream and or pie? Yeah, Healdsburg loves uh, the Dutch cookie ice cream that we make. It's probably our most popular ice cream. All right, what makes for great ice cream? I mean, um, you know, not we're not... Is there something you guys use that makes yours special? Um, I think, you know, sh showcasing kind of local um, farms is kind of what our um, key ingredient is. So um, Dry Creek Peaches from Gale down the street, um, Front Porch Farms using locally um, local grains. Farm to table. Farm, farm to scoop. All right, farm to scoop. Okay, speaking of the scoop, this, here he is, the man himself. You're going to give it a whirl here? Decadent here. I'll say. All right, it's zero calorie, Sal. Remember that, zero. Oh, my God. Nice. Oh, like oh, I think yeah, he hates totally. it. <laughs> it's terrible. I hate it. Don't come here. Leave Don't come here. Just let, leave us alone. Remember to go to uh, thenoblefolk.com. Look it up. All of our pies, all of our ice cream. All right. Pies and ice cream on their way out of here. Back to you guys. Oh. <laughs> Can't wait. <laughs> I gained five pounds. <laughs> Hey, you know what? I yes. tell you what, it's good to hit up, be on the road again. It's so wonderful. We did them all summer here. long, right. and we are going to do them this coming summer, summer of 2020, That's these right. zip trips. And I'll tell you what, should we, should we say the first city we're going to? Do you know it? He doesn't know it. I don't know it. Oh. Know. We'll figure that out. Maybe we'll figure we come out back the to Sonoma months. County, right? That's right. Hey, seriously, though, Sonoma County, the yeah. door is open. Yep. Come up and visit all winter long. Great spots, yeah. restaurants, wineries, right. hotels. If you make a weekend out of it, right. come on up. Absolutely. There's no place prettier. Thanks for joining us here live on the 9 this morning. We're going to go sip, savor, and gather in Sonoma. We'll meet you up here this weekend. How's that? <laughs>